We continue now at the top of Daf Mem Aleph Amad Aleph Meseches Bab Metzia. This is Bab Metzia Daf Forty One A. This Daf is sponsored by David Grossman. Thank you for your sponsorship. If you would like to sponsor an Amad or a Daf, see the description box below and see the description box below to see how you can support this channel. On the previous Amad, the Gemar brought a brisa with the machlokas between Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva. In general, when a person steals something, do we need the knowledge of the owner when the when the robber wants to return the item? Does he need the knowledge of the owner? Rabbi Shmuel says that the knowledge of the owner is not needed, and now. Rabbi Rabbi Akiva says, no, it's Sarech Das Bailem, the knowledge of the owner is needed. And the Gemara wants to suggest that our Mishnah is Rabbi Yishmol, and that's why in the case of our Mishnah, once the person, let's say the Shomer, takes the item and he already places it down again, once he places it down, it's like Rabbi Yishmol, it's already been returned properly. And now he reverts, he goes back to being a Shomer Chinam, it doesn't matter why he moved it in the first place, and that's why in such a situation, he is not going to be responsible. That's what the Gemara said is the explanation of the Mishnah that follows Rabbi Yishmol. But the Gemara says the Rabbi Yishmael, but if you're saying our mission is Rabbi Yishmael, my ear yalo yichadu, why, why are we saying that specifically in a situation where there was not a designated corner for the item to be in the house? Afilo yichadu nami, even if there was a designated place for the item to be, still the halacha should be the same. The halacha should be that if he returns it, once he returns it to its place, at that point in time, even though the owner has no idea what happened, the shomer is just a regular shomer chinam, he's not responsible at any higher level. And the Gemara says, actually, according to Rabbi Shmuel, lo mi boy kamar, it means not only this, but even that, it actually is true in both cases. Meaning, lo mi boy yichadu, we don't even need to say this halach in a case where there's a designated area, to makomahu, because now it's being returned to its proper place, so of course he's going to be exempt. El afilu lo yichadu, but even in a situation where there was not a designated location, to lav makomahu, it's not it's, designa- it's not its designated place, lo ba'in on das bailam. The point of the Mishnah is, you don't need das bailam, the Mishnah is essentially following Rabbi Shmuel. Now that, again, is the ratio that's the beginning of the Mishnah. So the Gemara now takes a look at the end of the Mishnah. Ema Seva, let's look at the end of the Mishnah. The end of the Mishnah said, let's say the owners do designate a location for the item. He moves it and then it breaks. It doesn't matter if it breaks in his hands. It doesn't matter if he breaks it when he puts it down. If he moved it for himself, he is Chayiv. Now, if he moved it for the sake of the object, so then he's exempt. But the point over here is that he is Chayiv. It's not considered to be a a real hashava, it's not considered that it was really returned properly. And so the end of the Mishnah, son Rabbi Akiva, that seems to follow Rabbi Akiva, to Amar Bo'in on Das Bailam, that, you do, that says that you do require, Rabbi Akiva says you do require the knowledge of the owner, that's why it's problematic over here, because the owner has no idea what has occurred, he doesn't know that it was taken, returned, etc. But the Gemara says, if you're going to say the end of the Mishnah is Rabbi Akiva, I Rabbi Akiva, if you're going to say it's Rabbi Akiva, Ma'ir Yayichadu, why is that halacha only true where there's a designated location? Afilu lo yichdo nami, even if there was no designated location, it's still the same problem. The owner is not aware. And again, the Gemara answers for the end, the Lomi Boy Kamar, it means not only this, but even that. Lomi Boy Lo Yichadu, not only do we need to say it, of course we don't need to say it in a case where there's no designated place. To Lav Makomu, it's not even its, its proper location, of course he's responsible. El Afilu Yichadu Nami, but even if there's a designated location, to Makomu, where it's its proper place, but Inon Das Bailam. So we still need the knowledge of the owner. But the Gemara asks, but Reisha Rabbi Yishmal, Vesef Rabbi Kiva, are we then saying that the beginning of the mission is Rabbi Yishmal? And the end of the Mishnah is Rabbi Akiva. And the Gemara says, in yes, that's exactly the case. The Yom Rabbi Yochanan, because Rabbi Yochanan says, Man de metargam lechavis, aliba de chatana, anybody who's able to explain the mission of the barrel, according to just one tana, movil na money basre levei masus, I'll carry his clothing behind him to the bathhouse, meaning to say Rabbi Yochanan was saying the only way to understand this mission is to say that the beginning of the mission is one tana and the end of the mission is a different tana. And Rashi explains, according to Rabbi Akiva Tzarech Das Bailam, the knowledge of the owner is necessary when it's returned. Vim lo hodiam, and if you don't let the, the owners know, chayib achrusam, so then the Shomer is responsible. In May, so nignav, let's say it dies, or let's say it's stolen. To me, the shakle kam le birshus, because from the moment he takes the item, it is now in his rishus. Vahashava below yadi, alav hashava, if he returns it without the owner's knowledge, that's not called returning it. And the Gemara continues, Tir Gemara Rabbi Yaakov Bar Abba Kamei De Rav. Rabbi Yaakov Bar Abba, he explained the mission in front of Rav that it really could all be one Tana. And Shinat Al Manas Lagozla, the case is that the person took it, the Shomer took it, on the understanding that he was trying to steal it. And Tir Gemara Rabbi Nasan Bar Abba Kamei De Rav, Rabbi Nasan Bar Abba, he explained the Mishnah all according to one Tana in front of Rav. Shinat La Al Manas Lishloach Boyad, that the Shomer took it because he was thinking that he was going to use the item improperly. 
And Rashi explains, Tirgamo Rabbi Yaakov, Rabbi Yaakov interprets the Mishnah, the Teiku Kula Kachatano, Vitrei Taimi, that you could say the Mishnah is all following one Tana with two separate reasonings, and it means as follows, Reisha Sheikh Zir Lamakoma, in the Reisha, in the beginning of the Mishnah, he essentially returned into its proper place. Now, why is that true? The Chom Makom Sheikh Zir Lamakoma, because anywhere where he returns it, it is its proper place. The Halo Yichdo Lamakom, because there was no designated location for the item. Viseva Sheikh Zir Lamakom Sheena Makoma, and the way he's understanding is that at the end of the Mishnah, he did return it, but to a place that was not the designated location, Now, all of this will be explained as the Gemara continues and concludes this answer. Rashi just notes what we're going to say at the end of the Gemara. We're going to say, We're going to say that the end of the Mishnah is talking where he put it in a place that was not the designated location. It's actually going on both of these answers, meaning Rabbi Yaakov and Rabbi Nassim. It's going on both Rabbi Yaakov's answer and Rabbi Nassim's answer. By the and it's also going on Rav Sheshis' answer, which we'll see. And the point is that in the end of the Mishnah, since he put it outside of the designated location, that's not called returning it. And the case would be that when he originally took it, he took it to steal it. And that's what it means. He took it for his needs. It means he actually was intending on stealing it. If he was just taking it to borrow or to use, since that's not really stealing, so then any kind of returning would be sufficient. And therefore, anywhere where he would, he would place it, he would be exempt by Onsen, he would be exempt from Onsen. But since the case over here is that it's stolen, by, by stolen items, it says, it has to be returned. If this guy returned it to the place that was not designated, to an undesignated location, that's not called returning, and that's why there is a level of responsibility. And Rashi continues, Rabbi Nosan Tirgama, and Rabbi Nosan explains the Mishnah, Dafilu lo notla, al menas legoz levechulu, even if he didn't take it in order to steal it, ela al menas le shloach bayad velito mixasa velo notl, rather he took it to misappropriate it, to take part of it, he didn't take it, afilu hachi nevertheless, kamalei bereshu say it's considered to be in his reshus, kula, it's considered to be entirely in his, in his reshus, vehavala gazela, it's considered stealing, uboy hashav, and you need to have a proper returning, uvamakom sheino makom alav hashav, and again in an area, that's not its designated location. That's not called returning it. For Rav Sheshes lo shavik de lesayim muleter tzayu. Now Rav Sheshes doesn't allow them to finish their answer. Be ask if midi not lo katani, and then he asks his question. Umiu siyuma de milsa de maskana. But nevertheless, when the Gemara now concludes, v'seifa shinicha b'makom sheina makoma akulokai. When the Gemara concludes and says that the end of the Mishnah is talking about where it was placed in the undesignated in an undesignated location, that's going on both of these answers, as Rashi explained earlier. And the Gemara continues, What are Rabbi Yaakov, Bar Abba, and Rabbi Nosan, Bar Abba arguing about? Why does one say that the case of the Mishnah is he took it to steal it, and the other one says that he took it in order to misappropriate it? And the Gemara says, And they're arguing whether Shlichas Yad, meaning when the Torah talks about Shlichas Yad, does there need to be depreciation through that Shlichas Yad, through that misappropriation? Man Amar Legozla, the one who says that the case of the Mishnah is that the Shomer took it to steal it, Kasavar Shlichas Yad, Shlichasyad, and he holds that Shlichas Yad, misappropriation creation requires chisarn, requires that it depreciates for it to be considered shlichas yad. Bayad, but the one who says that the case of the mission again is that he misappropriated the item, kasavar shlichas yad, ain't a chisarn. He holds that shlichas yad does not require depreciation. And Rashi explains Shlichas Yad, again, misappropriating the item. So the Pasuk says that if the Shomer is Sholeyach Yad, he's Chayev even on Onsen. He's Chayev even on accidents. Kedachsiv, as it's written in the Pasuk, It says again, he takes an oath that it was an accident and that he didn't misappropriate the item. That sounds like if he did misappropriate the item, and he is going to be Chayev if it dies, if it breaks, etc. So means to say it requires depreciation. It's not considered shlichas yad that it's in his rishus and he's responsible. Elaim kein chaser unless there is some kind of loss. There's some kind of depreciation, and so that's the machlokas again between Rabbi Yaakov Barab and Rabbi Nasan Barab. But the Gemara continues, Ma'askif Lord of Sheshis, Rav Sheshis asks, asks on both of these answers, Midi not Lakatani, does it say in the Mishnah that the Shomer took it as though he's taking it for himself? Tilt Lakatani, it just says that he moves it, it doesn't say anything about taking it for himself. 
Elo Amar of Sheishas, rather of Sheishas says, Hachab am I asking, and here in the Mishnah, what is the case? Kegon Shatiltullah, Lahavi Oleg Gozalos. The case is that he actually moved it because he wanted to stand up on it in order to retrieve some birds that were higher up. The Kasavar, and he holds, meaning to say the Mishnah holds, Shoel Shalomidas, Gazlan Have, that if a person borrows something without the knowledge of the owner, that makes him a Gazlan. So even though he wasn't really taking it, he wasn't misappropriating it, he wasn't trying to steal it, but nevertheless, he's a Shoel Shalomidas, he's considered a Gazlan. And the Gemara now continues the answer, and again, this goes according to all of the opinions. The cooler Rabbi Yishmol, he were going to say that the entire Mishnah follows Rabbi Yishmol. The safe, and then we'll just understand that the end of the Mishnah, the reason why the Shomer is responsible, that because he returned it to the place, he put it in a place which was not the designated location, and that's why there is a problem, that's why he's responsible at the end of the Mishnah. And Rashi explains, Midi Natsla Katani Demashma Shinatla Liatsma. Does it say he took it? It sounds like he took it for himself. It doesn't say that. It says Tiltala Katani. It just says he moved it. Latash Mashbi Alma. Mashma Latsarcho Demasis. And he was just doing some kind of use. But he wasn't trying to actually steal the item or misappropriate the item. And so therefore, if Shesha said, Ella Kagon Shatiltala Lahavi Alea Gozalus, he moved it because he needed to retrieve some birds. Lalo Salea Kederach Sulam. He needed to use it like a ladder. Lito Gozalus to take the Gozalus Mikan Gavoa from some high nest that they were in. And Rav is saying, nevertheless, it is considered stealing. It's considered in his Rishos until he does a proper hashava, until he returns it properly to Kasavar, because he holds that if somebody borrows something without the knowledge of the owner, that person is considered a Gazlin. The Kula Rebbe Yishmol, he were going to say the entire thing is Rebbe Yishmol, meaning to say, we're now going on all three answers. Ad Rebbe Yaakov, Ad Rebbe Nosan, Ad Rebbe Rav Sheshes, we're going on Rabbi Yaakov, Rabbi Nosson, and Rav Sheshes' answer. We'll explain again that the end of the mission is talking about where it's where it's put in, a, in an area that's not the designated location. But in the Rish, in the beginning of the Mishnah, anywhere where he places it, that's considered the designated location. And the Gemara continues for Rabbi Yochanan. Now, what about according to Rabbi Yochanan? He said that you cannot interpret the Mishnah as being all the same time. It can't all be Rabbi Yishmol. And the reason for that is because Rabbi Yochanan understood that at the end of the Mishnah, when it says he puts it down, he did put it in the designated location. And therefore, you can't make such a distinction between the Resha and the Seifa and say that the Resha, it was put in the designated location and the Seifa, it was not, because it sounds like in the Seifa, it was put in the designated location as well. Rashi explains Rabbi Yochanan, Dhamrali El Again, Rabbi Yochanan who said that anyone who could explain it according to one Tana, meaning to say it's like impossible to explain it that way, he nicha mashma. Again, he understood that when it says in the Mishnah he placed it, it means he put it in the right place. That's why you can't say that the entire Mishnah follows Rabbi Yishmael. And the Gemara continues, Itmar, it was stated the following Machlokas Amoraim, Rav of Levi. There's a Machlokas Rav and Levi. Chadamar Shlichos Yatzricha Chisar. And one says that again, by misappropriation of the item, there needs to be a depreciation for it to be considered Shlichos Yad. Vachadamar Shlichos Yad, Enet Shlichos Chisar. And the other one says Shlichos Yad does not require depreciation. And the Gemara says, Testayim, let us conclude, the Rav who do Amar Shlichos Yad, Enet Shlichos Chisar. And that it's Rav that says that Shlichos Yad does not require depreciation. Tatania, as we learned in Abraisa, Let's say a shepherd is taking his flock, comes to the city, and a wolf comes and tears, and a lion comes, and that's how the damage occurs. So the halach is, the halach is, he's exempt. However, he niach maklo v'sarmilo ale. Let's say he places his staff or he places his his bag upon the animal. So then chayev. Then he's going to be chayev for these uh, for this kind of damage. And so the Gemara says v'havinan ba. Now we asked the question on this brayso. Mishum di niach maklo v'sarmilo ale chayev. Just because he put his staff or his bag on the animal, suddenly now he's chayev. Before we assume that it's an accident and he's not chayev, and now suddenly he's chayev. The Gemara says hashaklinu, but he already took it off the animal. Why does that make him chayev? And so the Gemara answer to that Amar of Nachman. Rav Baravu Amar Rav Rav Nachman said that Rav Baravu said that Rav said and again we're looking for the opinion of Rav over here Rav said we're talking about where he placed his items on the animal which he was not supposed to do and they're still on the animal and that's why now he's responsible even for accidents but the Gemara says I have it but even if it's still on the animal what difference does it make 
but he didn't actually pull the animal. You actually have to pull the animal in order that it's in his reshus, that he should be responsible for all of these accidents. And the Gemara said to that, Rav Shmuel Bar Rav Yitzchak Amar Rav, Rav Shmuel Bar Rav Yitzchak said that Rav said, she kisha b'makel, he hit it with a stick, v'rotz the lafan of it, it ran in front of him, and that's considered a misappropriation of these animals, and that's why he's responsible for onsim. And so the Gemara now says, now this is all Rav talking, v'halo chasra, but there was no depreciation over here. Yet we see that that's considered to be shlichas yad, and he's responsible. Elat lav shmami no kasava shlichas yad, ain't tzricha chisar. And rather, don't we see from here that shlichas yad does not require depreciation? The Gemara says not necessarily. Ema, what we could say is sheik chisha b'makel. It doesn't just mean that he hit it with a stick, but he weakened it with a stick. Now, if he weakened it with a stick, that already is a depreciation. And the Gemara says dekanami. We have an inference like that as well. The katani, because what does it say? It says sheik chisha b'makel. It says again he hit it with a stick. That implies that there is some kind of depreciation. And the Gemara says, Shema Mina, indeed, you see that is the case. And so, Umidurav, Savar Shlichas Yad, Chisarn, from the fact that Rav holds Shlichas Yad does require depreciation, because now we're saying that that's Rav's opinion, that he holds that Shlichas Yad does require depreciation. So then it would emerge that Levi Savar Shlichas Yad, Enetzricha Chisarn, that Levi holds that Shlichas Yad does not require depreciation. And the Gemara says, My time of the Levi, what's the reason of Levi? Amr Rabbi Yochanan Mishum Rabbi Yosi Ben in Nehoroi. Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Yosi Ben Nehoroi, Mishuna Shlichos Yad Hu Amur Beshomer Sacher, Mishlichos Yad Hu Amur Beshomer Chinam. The Shlichos Yad that is stated by a Shomer Sacher, that's by a paid watchman, is different than the Shlichos Yad that is stated by a Shomer Chinam, by one who is watching for free. And Rashi explains, Pater, again, the shepherd is Pater, Da'on Seninu, because these are all considered to be accidents. Rashi goes on to quote the Gemara later on, which explains why it's an accident over here, not negligence. And Rashi continues, Hashak Linu V'inami, Shlichas Yad Chashiva, he took, it, he took the items off the animal. So even if it is Shlichas Yad, Ha'hadra Hadra Kishanat Lohimenu, it's like he returned the item, so to speak, when he took the items off the animal. Vanon Mukminan Le'el, Stam Masnis and Krabi Shmol, Dein Sarch Das Bailem, we say in general, like Rabbi Shmol, that you don't require Das Bailem, so therefore just taking the items off the animal should be enough to remove the shlichas yad. And then the Gemara asks, Holo Mashri, even if you're going to say the items are still on the animal, but he didn't do a mashicha, he didn't pull the animal. B'shlichas yad, k'day l'kano, so that has to be a kind of an acquisition, you have to pull the animal. You can only have an acquisition through pulling the animal. That applies by buying, that applies by stealing, by shlichas yad, you need to have a mashicha. K'day l'kano, k'day l'kano, k'day l'kano, we say that by the barrel as well. If you just tilt it, you don't do a mashicha. Alma be'inan delikni. You see, you see the point is that there needs to be an actual acquisition in this situation. And then the Gemara eventually said, Dekonami will prove as well that we're talking here where there is a chisar and the animal weakened. Dekhisha kama rav. That rav was saying that the animal was weakened. Midanakat hakoshas makil demaka chazaki. The language of hakoshas makil sounds like he hit the animal with strength. And then the Gemara said, and we derav savar tzricha chisaron tazaikin and we denakat makil. And from the fact that Rav says there does need to be depreciation, like we understood from the staff, so Levi bar pluk say savar ain't tzricha chisaron would come out that Levi holds there does not need to be depreciation. And the reason of Levi, the Gemara said, was because mishuna shlichas yad shlichas yad that said by Shomer Sacher is different than Shomer Chinam. Kolomar, what it means to say is as follows: ain't a dome zul ain't a dome lezu. You can't compare it. Shazu nemra litzorech. Because by Yeshom Chinam, there was a need to say Shlichas Yad, and therefore we understand it's talking where there's depreciation. But when it came to Shomer Sacher, that was stated there. There was no need to state it. So therefore, the reason why it's there is for a drasha. It's to teach that when it comes to Shlichas Yad, you don't need a chisar, and you don't need there to be depreciation. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video. And Daf Mem Aleph Amid Beis.